Your Excellencies, Ministers of Science, Technology, Innovation, Higher Education, Mr. Deputy Director General of UNESCO, Mr. Xu Xing, esteemed scientists, young scientists, ladies and gentlemen, it's a tremendous pleasure for me today to welcome you in the presence of such an illustrious gathering of government representatives and scientists from across the world to celebrate the launch of the International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development. How fitting that this ceremony should take place here in UNESCO, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, promoting science for a peaceful world since more than 75 years. We have been waiting for this day for a long time, a day when we finally get to raise the profile of the basic sciences and understand better how it contributes to our everyday lives. So that more people will understand also the vital role of basic sciences in decision making. So that more people will appreciate the importance of raising the investment in basic science in order to lay stronger foundations to erect sustainable societies for now and for the future, but also to mobilize our children that they would want the basic sciences. Within the United Nations system, UNESCO is the lead agency for the International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development. It is thus now my honor and privilege to invite Mr. Xu Xing, who is the Deputy Director General of UNESCO, to open this event on behalf of Madam Audrey Azoulay, the Director General, who regrets very much not to have been present with us physically here today. Interpretation is available if you would like. The headphones are also next to you. Thank you very much. Excellences, Mesdames, Messieurs, si je peux m'exprimer devant vous dans cette grande salle avec ce micro, c'est grâce aux sciences fondamentales. Car chacun des objets qui nous entourent, les bâtiments, dans lesquels nous nous trouvons, tout cet univers technique est le fruit d'une accumulation de découvertes scientifiques. Songez, par exemple, aux milliards de transistors des processeurs qui équipent votre smartphone et dont le lointain prédécesseur, inventé dans les années 1940, ne tiendrait pas dans votre poche. Songez aussi au principe de mécanique ou de thermodynamique à maîtriser pour que vous puissiez venir ici en voiture ou en métro. C'est cet apport immense et paradoxalement méconnu des sciences fondamentales, mathématiques, physiques, chimie, biologie, que nous célébrons cette année. Ces sciences peuvent même changer la marche de l'histoire face aux crises qui nous frappent. Je pense aux vaccins qui ont permis de sauver des millions de vies durant la pandémie de Covid et qui ont été rendus possibles par la recherche scientifique. Je songe encore à la biochimiste hongroise Kathleen Kirikariko, une pionnière pour ARTN messager que nous avons récemment honorée lors d'une cérémonie à l'UNESCO dans le cadre du prix L'Oréal l'UNESCO pour les sciences, pour les femmes et, les, et la science. Et bien entendu, je ne peux occulter l'importance des sciences face aux défis climatiques. La biomasse, hydrogène vert, le captage de carbone, la voiture électrique, toutes ces innovations nécessaires sont d'abord des défis scientifiques. En somme, les sciences peuvent changer notre monde et nos sociétés en les rendant plus durables. C'est le thème central 
de cette année internationale. Gardons-nous cependant de voir les sciences simplement comme des outils utilitaires ou techniques. Elles sont aussi l'expression d'un besoin profondément humain, celui de la curiosité, de l'étonnement devant le monde. Cette petite voix en nous qui, qui nous demande toujours pourquoi. Une chose est sûre, si le monde de demain est plus durable, nous le devrons aux trouvailles d'esprit à la fois curieux et cartésien. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, UNESCO is the United Nations Agency for Science. It is the S in our name. As such, we have worked for over 75 years to develop the basic sciences. For example, by promoting international scientific cooperation. I'm sure you all know of the particle accelerator at CERN in Switzerland, which discovered the Higgs bosons. Perhaps some of you know that CERN recently celebrated the 10th anniversary of this discovery. But not many people know that the convention to create CERN was signed here in Paris in 1953 under the auspices of UNESCO. UNESCO also gave rise to CESAM, a world-class research center which was inaugurated in 2017. This is, not, this is not only a major scientific success, making it possible to analyze the properties of matter as well as interactions between light, uh, between light and matter. It is also an inspiring diplomatic project, bringing together scientists from across the Mediterranean and the Middle East. More broadly, through the UNESCO recommendation on open science, we support the development of more accessible, more equal, and more efficient science within and between countries. But to support the basic sciences, we also take action in all levels of society, especially upstream during the first years of school. Because in this field, gender inequality is a structural problem. Indeed, according to UNESCO science report, only one in three researchers is a woman. At a time when the world needs as many scientists as possible, we cannot deprive ourselves of so much talent. That is why UNESCO is supporting the careers of women scientists. In particular, we are doing this in Africa as one of our global priorities. For example, we are supporting a scientific mentorship program which was reached more than 11 million students in East Africa, especially girls. With the L'Oreal Foundation, we have also supported the careers of nearly 4,000 women scientists in 115 countries. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the basic science can and should be our best allies in responding to contemporary challenges. Uh, the, as the specter of climate disruption looms on the horizon, this is not an option, it is an obligation. UNESCO will continue to call for scientific education at all ages and for greater research budgets. Because betting on intelligence is the most intelligent investment there is. For, in the words of French physicist Marie Curie, nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. I thank you very much.
Thank you very much to our Deputy Director General, Mr. Shooting, for those very inspiring opening statements. Thank you. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it was in December last year that the United Nations General Assembly actually proclaimed 2022 as the International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development. Scientists across the world who are all joining us online today in this hybrid format, scientists present here in the room, the policymakers, have all contributed in their many ways to raising the fall for basic sciences. However, behind this proclamation, there are a number of people who've acted very strongly behind the scenes and mobilized the international community. And I would like to highlight particularly here the tireless efforts by Honduras to make this vision a reality. Honduras organized a series of meetings, discussions across the world to convince member states of the expected impact of such a year to bring basic science to reality. So excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming His Excellency, Dr. Luther Castillo Harry, who is the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation of the Republic of Honduras. His Excellency, the Minister, will be speaking on behalf of Mrs. Iris Ziomara Castro Sarmiento, who is the President of Honduras. Dr. Luther Castillo Harry is highly committed to providing services to under this underserved communities in access to healthcare and accessing the latest developments in science, technology, and innovation for healthier societies. As a young doctor, he led a project to build the first Garifuna Hospital in the community where he grew up. He was also the first director of a hospital which is run by the local community gives us great pleasure to welcome you to UNESCO today. Excellency, Minister. Señores ministros y queridas ministras, Secretario General de las Naciones Unidas, señor Presidente de la Asamblea General de las Naciones Unidas, señor Director General Adjunto de la UNESCO, señor Presidente del Comité y Presidente de la Unión Internacional de la Unión Internacional de Física Pura, Aplicadas, Excelencias, Distinguidas, Señoras y Señores. En nombre de de nuestra presidenta, la primera mujer presidenta de la República de Honduras, Iris Xiomara Castro de Celaya, del gobierno y pueblo de Honduras, enviamos nuestro más ferviente y caluroso saludo con la convicción profunda que los mejores resultados de esta importante celebración. El 2 de diciembre del 2021, Honduras tuvo el honor de presentar ante la Asamblea General de las Naciones Unidas, con el apoyo de un gran número de patrocinadores, el proyecto de resolución A76L12, titulado Año Internacional de las Ciencias Básicas para el Desarrollo Sostenible del 2022, el cual fue preparado como seguimiento del mandato de la Conferencia General de la UNESCO la Conferencia General de la UNESCO, que aprobó por unanimidad en su 40 reunión el 25 de noviembre del 2019, una resolución propuesta por su Consejo Ejecutivo 207 XDG para apoyar la proclamación del año 2022 como Año Internacional de las Ciencias Básicas para el Desarrollo Sostenible por parte de la Asamblea General de las Naciones Unidas. La pandemia de la COVID-19 demuestra dramáticamente la necesidad de que la sociedad desarrolle el conocimiento científico necesario para hacer frente a estos flagelos similares y para ayudar 
a los gobiernos y parlamentos a tomar decisiones basadas en ciencias. Los niveles de interés, de participación en las ciencias básicas requieren iniciativas persistentes para elevar los niveles de las ciencias básicas. En ese sentido, es momento de implementar acciones para el año internacional interdisciplinario de las ciencias básicas para el desarrollo sostenible. Por tanto, la proclamación de este año internacional ha permitido involucrar socios estratégicos y partes interesadas de la comunidad científica internacional, los responsables políticos, gobiernos para desarrollar sinergias e iniciativas conjuntas en líneas con visión de los objetivos del plan de acción, la sociedad civil en particular, las organizaciones no gubernamentales, nacionales e internacionales y, por supuesto, también el sector privado. Asimismo, esta iniciativa ha sido impulsada por una coalición muy fuerte de científicos y socios incluidos en la Unión Internacional de la Física Pura y Aplicada, el Laboratorio Europeo de Físicas de Partículas y Académicas de Ciencias de todo el mundo. Estamos seguros que este año internacional atenderá aún más con los gobiernos para promover campañas y acciones, hábitos en pro de estos objetivos, asimismo el apoyo de otros agentes como los medios de comunicación, la empresa privada y los ciudadanos y podrá permitir la aceleración de su conservación y su buen uso. Nuestra presidenta Xiomara Castro de Celaya, a escasos cinco meses de su gobierno, ha tomado acciones concretas y rotundas y decisiones en plan del fortalecimiento de las ciencias básicas y el sistema educativo, impulsar la tecnología, la ciencia y la innovación y la priorización de este elemento como fundamento para el fortalecimiento educativo. La protección también decisiva del medio ambiente con la conformación de un gabinete ambiental, también el dictamen de la emergencia ambiental para la protección de un pulmón del mundo como es la biósfera de Río Plátano, la formación de una tarea, fuerza de tarea del Batallón Verde y también de una u otra manera la, la prohibición de la minería a cielo abierto todos elementos fundamentales para acuerpar la batalla en conjunta en pro de la, del medio ambiente. Queremos en nombre de nuestra presidenta dar la bienvenida también al primer encuentro continental latinoamericano de la UNESCO de las Ciencias Básicas en Honduras en los primeros meses del 2023. La adopción de la resolución de la Asamblea de las Naciones Unidas es muestra del compromiso de todas las delegaciones acreditadas en la ONU de la promoción de las ciencias básicas para la humanidad y el fortalecimiento de su enseñanza para lograr el desarrollo sostenible y mejorar la calidad de la vida de todas las personas en el mundo. No hay ciencia ni sin personas, sin personas ni ciencias. El sujeto de la ciencia debe de ser siempre el ser humano y debemos de acuerpar también los conocimientos populares y los conocimientos ancestrales, que también es un reto de la ciencia encontrarse sumergidas en las mismas. El gobierno de la República de Honduras Agradece a los Estados miembros y socios estratégicos que nos acompañan para expandir las actividades relacionadas con la promoción de las ciencias básicas, en especial a la UNESCO y con el comité directivo creado con el fin de promover la proclamación del año como año internacional de las ciencias básicas para el desarrollo sostenible. Muchas gracias. Juntos por un mundo mejor. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much, uh, His Excellency, uh, Minister Dr. Luther Castillo-Harry. 
I promise you we had not decided in advance on the green color for today. Our next speaker now that I would like to invite um, is a very unusual personality. It is gratifying to know that someone with expertise in environmental sustainability is the president-elect of the 77th session of the United Nations General Assembly. I'm referring here to His Excellency, Mr. Saba Korosi, who has honored us with his presence here today from New York. You may not know, but His Excellency, Mr. Saba Korosi, has contributed enormously to the building blocks of the Sustainable Development Goals many years ago. He will be focusing his presidency on finding solutions through solidarity, sustainability, and science, and the freedom of scientific research. We at UNESCO look forward to working with you, Mr. Korosi, and we are delighted you're able to join us here today. Please join us. Thank you. Ministers, <clears throat> Mr. Deputy Director General, Madam Assistant Director General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for inviting me and offering the opportunity to address you this morning. Houston, we have a problem. You might have heard this famous sentence, but as you know, what seemed to be a single problem turned out to be a cascading events on the board of the Apollo 13, one triggering the other and step by step reducing the life supporting capability of the spaceship. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here today to tell you how much we need your contribution and support to the UN General Assembly. We are facing the most dangerous mixture of risk factors threatening development, peace, and security. And however hard is it to admit the existence of our civilization on the planet more than any time in the last four decades. During the first year of the pandemic, we received, let's call it a postcard from the future only indicating what might be awaiting us further down on the road if we don't change course. Now a big power which is approaching us. Before we even start the first debate in September, the 77th session of the General Assembly is already overshadowed by war, displacement, food, and climate and water crisis, the diminish, diminishing of, of our ecological carrying capacity, sovereign debt crisis, and declining trust among countries and many other stakeholders. We are at a watershed moment, politically, economically, and in terms of our socio-ecological sustainability. The urgent tasks stretch way beyond one year, but there is no more time to protect transformation. We have to build trust and show positive pathways into a different, better future. This is not always easy, but we know that science and innovation are, uh, are key to empowering decisions and decision makers around the world, discovering alternative ways to organize ourselves and the way we harmonize our operations within nature. 
innovating a non-sustainable economic practice into a new era business model that goes beyond GDP is one of the great challenges of the year to come. Resolving the water, uh, water and climate crisis in an integrated manner will be part of our journey. So will be the renewal of food production and food security that has a bearing way, way beyond the immediate consequences of the war in Ukraine. Similarly, we need to find solutions to the immediate challenge of, challenges of the energy, energy crisis and the ways of long-term energy transition that requires new technologies and trillions of investments. The International Year of Basic Sciences and uh, hopefully the decade of basic sciences in the near future offer great opportunities for all to contribute. The work of the General Assembly will need to hinge on the pragmatic advice from this science community. We desperately need open science, involvement of as many stakeholders as possible, and the ability to transform big data into pragmatic solutions. I believe that solutions for our current problems are best developed in two dimensions. The first challenge is how to fill the knowledge gaps that slow transformation today and to find the core benefits of integrated, cross-sectoral and multilateral thinking and operating. This will enable us to offer developing new business cases. Many of us who are able to change things are simply too comfortable in their habits and see no need to do business differently. In the second step, we need to de develop and operate platforms that will provide information and services to anyone, anyone on this planet. To do this, we need the scientific community to develop new and further looking scientific guidance and validation procedures that will al allow us to monitor and assess how our behavior on this planet impacts the economy, social justice, and ecological carrying capacity. We need to look out and embark on the best pathways to secure peace, stability, welfare, and healthier, healthier planetary ecosystem. The model of the IPCC has been one that has surely contributed a fair bit to motivating the UN member states to come together in the Paris Agreement. Let's learn from our own successes to scare them up. Ahead of each and every big event decisions by the General Assembly, we need to see scientific evidences and how they could be taken on board during decision shaping processes. I am looking forward to your contributions to our common agenda. Please engage in scientific cooperation where political tensions are the highest. Please engage into a betterment of policy and service delivery. Please ignore taboos and accept and share your errors so that they do not need to be repeated over and over again. Please approach my team with your ideas on how we can strengthen the contribution of basic sciences to the work of the United Nations General Assembly. It has been an honor addressing you. Thank you much for your attention. Thank you, Your Excellency Corossi, and rest assured that UNESCO is looking forward to working with you. 
and bringing UNESCO science programs to the service of humanity and also to your mandate. We look forward to working with you. Excellencies, um, dear ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is a renowned, well-known scientist, a physicist who was the president of CERN Council at a very momentous time. Professor Michel Spiro is a very celebrated physicist and well-known. During his term at CERN, CERN had celebrated the 10th anniversary of the landmark discovery of the Higgs-based boson at the Large Hadron Collider. This happened during his presidency. He's currently president of the International Union of Pure and Applied Physics. Beside being a renowned scientist, a physicist, a science communicator, I would also say that the tale of the International Year of Basic Science for Sustainable Development that we are launching here today is really due to all his efforts. He has tried to bring basic science to the fore, to raise awareness and to start the movement for basic science. This all began in 2017 when he led the movement, the world movement, to believe more in science and trust in science. A group of UNESCO staff members joined Professor Michel Spiro in, the, in this journey to the International Year for Basic Science. Since then, Professor Michel Spiro has overcome a pandemic to realize his dream. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it, was, it is with great honor and pleasure I welcome Professor Michel Spiro. Thank you. This is too much, probably, but thank you very much, Shamila. Dear uh, dignitaries, dear colleagues and friends, thank you very much for uh, being there, here, to, at this opening ceremony of the International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development. I want to thank uh, UNESCO first, especially Shamila Nair Bedwell, but also Ahmed Fami. Amal Kasri and Atu Diakite for their constant active support and help, as well as the Vice Chairs and Secretary General of IYBSSD, the International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development, especially Maurizio Bonnard here, uh, Jean Trantanvan here also, and Luc Almore, as well also as the International Science Council and Last but not least, the 49 unions and organizations of the steering committee, the 110 academies of the International Advisory Committee, and the uh, 30 Nobel laureates and medal fields of the Hype International Patronage Committee. I do not forget our sponsors, the Editor Frontiers, the Royal Chemical Society, and the Spanish Chemical Industry Federation. A special thank also to the Republic of Honduras, which took the initi initiative of bringing the resolution for the proclamation of the year to the 76th United Nations General Assembly. Thanks to all member countries which supported the resolution, and thanks for the consensus around it. The message that I would like to pass will be much better expressed in the forthcoming short video made by CERN, starring my grandniece, Eloise Goldberg. So please, could you show the video? Curiosity about the world around us is what makes us human. This desire to make sense of the world is the driving force behind fundamental science. 
Stirred by this curiosity, each new generation of scientists adds to the pool of knowledge built up by previous generations. We are at a crucial time for the future of our planet. Now, more than ever, it is imperative to use this pool of knowledge to help solve the global problems we face and pave the way for a more sustainable development. And we must not stop being curious. Future generations will be inspired by the knowledge we contribute today, equipping them with the powerful tools they need to build a better world. You can read now the statement, which might be the statement of the year. There are three slides. So I think we can now thank CERN for this video and applaud the Eloise. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Spiro. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, since the inception of UNESCO some 25 years ago, the S was put in to promote peace, not only through education, culture, and communication, but also through the sciences. And 75 years on, UNESCO continues to be the vanguard of science in the United Nations system and globally. UNESCO was instrumental in the establishment of CERN back in 1953. And more recently, UNESCO has worked with governments to establish another particle accelerator called CESAM, promoting science without borders. This was also inaugurated in 2017. But like CERN, CESAM is also an example of what science diplomacy can achieve when it fosters scientific excellence and peaceful relations in tandem with international scientific collaboration in the basic sciences. Now, although UNESCO has always had programs in basic sciences since, since its inception some 20, uh, 75 years ago, um, a unique program was born in UNESCO in 2005, and UNESCO launched the first ever United Nations International Basic Science Program. This program is entrusted with an extremely important mission, and that is of restoring trust, public trust in science, by explaining candidly to the public what scientific progress is all about and the long and torturous pathway of basic science, the rewards of investment in science and how well worth this is for the future of humanity. We have seen a video by a young lady calling upon the scientists, the policy makers, investors and private sector across the world. How can you ignore that call? So UNESCO established this international basic science program and scientists from across the world bring forth their expertise. Currently, there are 13 well-renowned scientists from across the world who are nominated for six years. I would like to introduce you to an exceptional women scientist. She is the first Moroccan and the first female French-speaking astronomer to travel to the heart of Antarctica. Dr. Miriam Shadid was elected as the chair of the UNESCO's International Basic Science Program. She's an inventor, and she developed a photometer Antarctic extinction apparatus, which can actually collect images robotically without any interruption over 150 days. This is exceptional. This has made it much more easier for scientists, not only to observe the stars, but to study extreme climatic conditions and climate changes in Antarctica which also affects our lives, even here in Paris. So please join me in welcoming Professor Miriam Shadid to the podium. Miriam.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Miriam Shadid. I am an astronomer and astrophysicist working on stellar physics. Also, I lead extreme scientific expeditions as an explorer in Antarctica. So I am very proud to be a scientist and a woman. When I was a child in Casablanca in Morocco, I was so fascinated by the brightness of the stars that I was obsessed to learn what happened there in the sky. My brother noticed my uh, curiosity for the sky and uh, gave me an astronomy book written by the French astronomer Jean-Claude Pecker. But the, the book content was so complicated for me as a child and that I wanted to, to give up. But my brother said, look up. If you want to understand your stars and this book, you should, you need start by learning mathematics, physics, and chemistry. And he was absolutely right. Studying the basic sciences, I contribute today as a woman astronomer. Recently, I discovered the gravity waves in the candles of our universe. So the basic sciences give me an opportunity unique to, study, to explore the world and to explore the universe and the world also under extreme human and climate conditions in Antarctica. Acting in order to reduce the climate change, I contribute to make this icy continent a reference place for sustainable development and the best ground-based astronomical observatory on the Earth. So now you can see how the basic sciences have a direct impact on our human beings' life, our planet, our universe, and they give us the, uh, this very interesting, um, very, the, the great ability to make decisions and also to bring definitive answers about our existence, our place in the universe, and even our origins. So today, we are launching the basic scientific year 2022, which was initiated and recommended by the International Scientific Board of the United Nations. This unique board for the basic sciences, IBSP, that I am very happy to lead, is focused on the development of the research and education for a better world. I take this opportunity to thank each member of our scientific board for their dedication to strengthen the link between the basic sciences and sustainable development goals. Each member has awareness, or sorry, has more awareness now than ever uh, for when really our world is calling for basic scientific knowledge in these unprecedented, urgent global challenges. Also, a huge thank to the UNESCO team for their support. So, a happy year, oh, <laughs> happy basic scientific year, 2022 for all of you, and let's make our world of the peace more sustainable for all. As Victor Hugo said, loin de se délater, tout esprit se contracte dans les immensités de la science exacte. Thank you very much. <laughs>